What's up everybody, my name is Kiara and I go by DJ Troy Frost and today I'm going to talk about my journey to becoming a DJ, um, how and why I became a DJ, and then I'm going to share my DJ setup, talk a little bit about what equipment I used, um, yeah, cool. So. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, my name is Kiara, and I go by DJ Troy Frost. I, where should I start? Um, well, I've always been a really big fan of hip hop. I used to dance when I was in like elementary and middle school, and when I was in high school, I, you know, continued being a really big fan of hip hop and wanted like another way to engage with it and um you know I, I wasn't really cut out as a rapper and uh I had stopped dancing at that point so um that's that's like the first time DJing became appealing to me I saw a lot of pictures of like Solange and Erica Badu, Macy Gray on um Tumblr and so for me that was like oh okay like word women can can do this and look fly while doing it so it was very much like an aesthetic thing but also me fantasizing about just playing all my favorite music um and for clarity I, I had seen women be DJs before Spinderella of course um but yeah it, it was like during that time, it was cool to see them doing that. Um, so that sparked my interest. It was really hard to find somebody to teach me. Um, I would ask some of my musician friends, like, do you know DJs? Can you show me? And so the aesthetic of the DJ attracted me. Um, my uncle, who's also my godfather, he had a set of CDJs. And for those of you who don't know, CDJs are like turntable equivalents, but instead of using vinyl, you can use CDs to play music. So he had that set up in my mom's house, and I would just play with it sometime, and have I would throw little like get-togethers with my friends, and that would be like our sound system. So it was pretty reliable, and it was like my first uh, chance to like really practice DJing. Um, and I liked it. It was cool. It was like fun. I didn't necessarily have the information or the tools um, to like really build my skills, but um, I worked with what I had and my desire to like learn more propelled me forward. So, um, you know, this is probably like ninth or 10th grade. So then senior year, fast forward to senior year this is when I started asking friends like do you know anybody who's a DJ who can teach me like really wanting to build on that curiosity um, and it was really hard they're, they're basically no they didn't know anyone that could teach me um, so I just kept messing around with my uncle's equipment um, then I went to college uh, after high school I did a post-grad year um, and then after that year, I went to Barnard College in New York City. And in the summertime before the, the fall of my freshman year, I was doing a program there. And I learned that uh, New York City has DJ schools, um, which is pretty dope. There's Dub Spot and Scratch Academy. Those are the two that I was aware of. And I kind of just did my research. And that summer, I was like, word, like, I'm going to... I'm gonna go to DJ school while I'm in college. I'm gonna do that because um, everything's there. That I'll get into that later. But anyway, so that summer I, you know, I was starting college. Once I got settled, and then I got myself a job on campus, and all of those elements were in place. I started to save. Um, first I reached out to Scratch Academy and they told me about their, um, they had a DJ intensive where it was like an intro class and a mixing class together. And so that was, I think like 
$600. So I'm like, word, I'm going to save up for this. And then next summer, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take that, that class. Um, so I saved up and then I ended up getting like a, a job on campus so that I could live on campus and then I would go to scratch like twice a week so that was I was like 20 years old and um, that was like a really key moment I was finally able to like get the um, training that I had wanted for a long time and two things so one it felt really good to like be in that space when I after I'd leave class I'd be like so excited and ready to like learn more um, I feel like that's a good indicator if you're somebody who is interested in DJing or just interested in something and maybe not clear on whether you should pursue it or if it's really your passion I feel like want you should go for it first of all um, and once you're in it notice how you feel I noticed that I felt like very like excited and like bird classes in two days I don't have any equipment to practice but like I'll just you know do my little whatever I like learning certain scratches like do using my you know my mind and my hands and making it work like I was like that like I felt very committed to um learning and so that was one thing the other thing was like uh investing in myself so you know giving work a purpose so i'm at school i'm taking these classes i'm in college right learning myself meeting people learning new york city um at the same time though i'm you know i'm working because that's a part of my tuition and like i have to sustain myself right that's a part of it i think for my for my story personally is like i didn't necessarily have it wasn't a thing where i could be like mom i want to be a dj okay like let's let's get you some classes let's i'm gonna call my dj friend they're gonna like it was hard to get those resources thankfully my uncle um he had equipment and he was connected to a dj friend and through him i was able to like get some of that learning um so to to use the money that i'm making at school and and not only to sustain myself but to save and like make this choice to invest that was like a uh, like a I think a shift for me of like really uh, going what's the word I'm looking for not going against the grain but it's like I had went to high school I did this postgrad year to like be more prepared to get into the college I really wanted to go to and then I got into college so it was like these things that society your parents your family tell you oh you need to do this you graduate from high school you go to college and right and so um nobody was necessarily encouraging me to like yeah you should you should do djing you should become a dj um i had to like that was something i wanted for myself so i had to invest in myself uh with i had to invest time energy and obviously money to make it happen and so i did and that was cool and um from there you know i was able to save more money and buy my turntables uh, which I have here with me and I'm, I'm gonna show y'all after this um, and yeah I would just use the money that I was making from the summer program that I had um, to kind of get my my equipment together piece by piece another indicator of like that from that DJing was for me and was something I really loved and enjoyed was that it was no problem I was like word all right techniques those are the turntables that were recommended and that are like that I was looking for I'm like where they go for like a thousand that's a lot of money I have no thousand dollars definitely not and so but you know you go on Craigslist you can find them for this much I'm in New York City so it was much easier than being in Boston um, so yeah, I just like, it was easy to spend the money on the equipment because I knew that it was something I wanted to do. And, um, so I got my equipment, um, I got like a really basic mixer. Uh, for clarity, you need, I think the, the a basic DJ setup includes two turntables and a mixer, some headphones. That's really all you need and some vinyl, right? Uh, we're in the digital age, so your setup can also have 
um, those three elements, well, four elements, plus a laptop and a Serato software to connect um, the music from your computer to control vinyl, which is like, there's no music on this. There's like one sound. I don't know what it's called right now. It's something I'll have to look up. Um, but basically there's some kind of signal here where you can, um, when you connect the Serato to your mixer, this works. I will explain more when I talk about the DJ setup. But anyway, um, yeah, I got all my equipment and then I like had my first gig that summer, which was really cool. Um, but it was like for a, a nonprofit that I had like been working with and still work with. Um, and it was a free gig. I didn't charge them, but it was like a chance for me to um, play out. Another thing that I did too was invite friends over and just play music. Like I would just play whatever and share what I had been practicing. So that's how I became a DJ. Um, the basic story of it. And why, why did I become a DJ? So I became a DJ for really a lot of reasons. I think initially it's kind of the basic stuff of like I had shared about like really appreciating the aesthetic the look I'm like Solange looks so cool um right but then also like being able to play whatever songs I want so like I was that person at a party with friends and I'm like annoying the DJ like can you play this song can you play this wait I need you mad annoying as a DJ now I would not like enjoy that person but that's who I was because I felt like excited about the music and wanted to I guess have a say in what I was hearing um and also hearing like certain songs and then being reminded of like other ones like oh you should play this one um but being out of bounds but anyway that was like something that sparked my interest but then also being someone who likes to talk about music a lot so not just so talking about music in terms of how it sounds and what songs I like and taking a lot of pride in, in knowing a lot of hip-hop music uh, but also talking about artists in their lives and uh, like comparing albums and um, doing that really early on like in if I really think about it like elementary school feeling like I had a, a strong opinion about artists um, or feeling like I had a, a say over like not a say but like that my opinion mattered about their music and who they were um, and so obviously that grew over time and so DJing felt like oh I can do all of these things at once and obviously like build the 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 skills to to do it but while doing that like I can kind of fulfill these these things that I enjoyed hip-hop music hip-hop culture um I also wanted to be a DJ because um it was like another form of work like I could play like get paid to play music that was appealing to me um yeah and now that I'm like older I've been DJing for seven years um and you know I've so I've had like a little bit of time with it and uh the it's like position in hip-hop as a whole which we will get into more on uh in another class but the dj is like such an important part of hip-hop history and culture and um as i learned more about that it it feel like it feels more sacred now where i'm like i take it very seriously and um i take my craft very seriously uh like knowing the craft practicing on my turntables being able to play on my turntables not just going uh to a computer or a controller and i don't think that's a bad idea if you're starting out um or if that's what you have access to then do that because before i had equipment all i had was youtube and i remember being at parties with friends or you know kickbacks or whatever and being uh friends would like seeing my friends 
go on YouTube, play one song, start playing the other one, and then turn the volume down on the other tab. Like, that was DJing, you know, like, using what you have. So I, I would encourage anybody who's trying to become a TJ, DJ to, like, uh, you may not have the means, right, to invest in this equipment. It can get very expensive, but use what you do have to, like, build your ear. Uh, try to be open to, to new music um, and kind of figuring out what kind of sounds you like and uh, things of that nature. There's ways to practice DJing without having all the material, which is something we could get in, more into. All right, so now I'm going to share a little bit about my DJ setup and uh, what equipment I use and for what. Um, so I guess we can start with this one, just get it out of the way. <laughs> This is a controller. Um, and, you know, it kind of feels blasphemous to start with this because it's like so new age and not a turntable and a mixer. However, it's, it was what was right next to me. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, this is a controller. I use this one a lot for gigs. So, when I have events, it's just easier to carry around like it's very easy it's lightweight um versus carrying like two big turntables and a mixer so it's much more convenient um and as you can see each side this is like this is the equivalent to one turntable another one and then you have your mixing materials your mixer in the middle so um everything is in one right and so just some basic stuff these are your platters right um and i don't even want to really get into detail about what everything is here i'd rather show you on turntables and a mixer so that then you can see how it shows up here so yeah this is it i will say these are some these are the faders so this everything here corresponds with this side and everything here corresponds with this side and then this goes back and forth so if it's in the middle that means you can hear both sides right and if I want to just hear this side that means I'd go here these two would have to be up if I just want this side I'd go here these channels like I said correspond with either side and you can go up or down to to change the volume so you can pause there. This is a controller. And now I'm going to show you a turn some turntables and a mixer. Alright, so here is a basic DJ setup. Please notice that there is no laptop yet. Um, I figured I'd start with the setup like it was back in the day. Imagine this is like... Uh, what's a good old song? Um, I mean, I could just put real vinyl. All right, next class we'll do it. Um, let's say this is loose ends hanging on a string, and this is Footsteps in the Dark by the Isley Brothers, right? So pretend these are vinyls. Um, these are vinyls too, but these are control vinyls. These are meant to be, um, used with your laptop and the program Serato. So we'll get into that. But anyway, Isley Brothers, Loose Ends, these are our pretend records for now. Um, let's start with the turntable. So this is called the platter. And you can see it spins. It's not even plugged in, but it spins. And um, this is the tone arm. So at the end here, you have a uh, the needle so to break it down a little bit the needle is only the needle is the smallest part on this my needle has some dust on it anyway the needle is like this tiny little piece right on this here and then you have um i believe it's called a stylus this is the head shell um, but this whole thing, you know, cartridge, excuse me, this is the cartridge, this is the needle, head shell, um, and then this plugs in to the tone arm here. Just 
twist that in. In the tone arm, you can pop this thing up. That'll lift it. Use this to bring it over. So this equipment is really sensitive. The needle can um, is really small, as you can see, and um, the vinyl can obviously scratch very easily. So you want to be careful with how you place it. Um, then you can put this down, and now the needle is touching the record. Um, here you have the on and off, the power button on and off. Right now it's not plugged in, but usually it would turn red. And then you have start and stop. This button gets the platter to spin and to stop spinning. And then here you have 33 and 45. So quick lesson on that. This, so 33 and 45 RPMs. So 33 RPM stands for revolution per minute. This is 33 revolutions per minute, 45 revolutions per minute. So this one, you can actually see on the the vinyl that says 33 RPM. Any like 12 inch vinyl that's this size is going to be 33 revolutions per minute. Oh. Shout out to Scratch Academy. Then 45 means that it's smaller. All right, so yeah, this is 33 revolutions per minute. And then a 45 is like a bit smaller. It goes out to like right here. And then you actually have a, um, that doesn't work. Anyway, 45 is a smaller record. So if you were using 45s, then you just press this button. Comes with a little light here. If you're in the dark at a club or a, an event. Um, and then over here, you have your pitch adjuster. So you can shift this in either direction to make the song uh, go a bit faster, right? Or you can move it in this direction to make it go a little bit slower. And this is a really important part of the turntable because when you're here on your mixer um, and you're trying to mix songs together, uh, let's say, um, well, actually, the, so remember we said Hanging on a String by Loose Ends, Footsteps in the Dark by the Isley Brothers. This song is a lot faster than this song. So I'd have to do a lot of adjusting here, um, maybe slowing this one down or bringing this one up, speeding it up so that they can be on, um, they can be in unison. Um, so let's get into the mixer. That's the turntable. Those are like the basic components of the turntable. And in our next class, I will actually show how to use it. And you, you can see these tools in, in action is what I'm trying to say. So um, the next piece of equipment is the mixer. And um, this is like a key component. Um, both the turntables plug into here. So you have, um, these are called RCA, the red and white cables are always called RCA cables. Um, and then you have a ground wire. So, and then you have a, uh, a plug to plug in. So you plug in to the wall and then you plug in your RCA cables into the back here, as well as your ground wire. Both turntables come in here. Um, as I said before, with the, um, controller the left the left side corresponds with the left turntable and the right side corresponds with the right turntable so if this is up you can hear the music that's happening on this side if this is up you can also hear the music happening on this side and then this one in the middle if you go to side a you're gonna hear this side if you go to side B you're gonna hear this side. Now, if both of these are up and this is in the middle, you're gonna hear what's going on on both sides. Um, another piece of equipment that you always need is headphones. So my headphones plug in down here. And when I'm practicing, um, or let's say I'm at an event, right? and uh, everyone's dancing to hanging on a string. 
that means that um, I could either have this fader up or I could just um, bring this all the way here. Uh, usually I like to have this fader up and then this one in the middle. And while everyone's listening to this at the party, they're listening to this side, this fader's up. I'm over here um, getting this song ready for everybody. So once I'm ready to mix it and I've done it in my headphones, then I can bring this one up, right? And while I'm bringing this one up, bring this one down. Or if I want to get creative, I could, you know, like bring this one all the way, bring this one over so they only hear this side and then bring this one up and scratch into the record, the next record using this fader. So let's just pause and take all that in. Um, if you're like, what is she talking about? That's okay, because as we continue, I'm going to actually demonstrate this live. Um, I just want to get you familiar with the equipment and the pieces so that, um, just to like build that memory. So when you see it again, you know, I'll explain again, but this time it'll be on and, um, can reinforce what we're learning right now. So, um, these are your faders. We got our turntables. Now here, I'm not going to get too much into this because there's so many parts. And I think this is actually a better thing to explain in action. But for this, I'll explain that this is the gain. So it's like a volume for each side, right? And then you have high, mids, and lows. And this refers to what's going on in a song. So if you have a lot of bass in a song, that's going to be your lows. And you can turn those down. So these are a way for you to like manipulate how the song sounds, which is helpful when you're transitioning. Sometimes if you have two songs that both have a lot of bass, you might want to take bass out of one of them as you transition into the next song. Um, what else? So in order to hear what's happening in your headphones, you have to use your cue. So as we know, on this mixer, this is a rain mixer, 57, and program one is on this side, program two. So that's just turntable one, right, to the left, turntable two to the right. So with the cue, if I move all the way to program one, that means in my headphones, I can hear everything that's happening on this side, and I can't hear this music in my headphones. So maybe this is playing out loud. This is what the people are partying to and jamming to. This is what I hear in my headphones because I'm getting ready. I'm getting the next song ready to keep the party going. So move my cue over here so I can hear it. If I put it in the middle, that means I can hear both sides in my headphones. If I move it to program two, that means I can only hear this side, the right side, in my headphones. So, um, that's the cue. So, um, for those of you who don't know what a cue is, a cue is a certain point in the song, whether it's in the beginning or if the, there's a certain lyric you want to highlight. A cue is just an area in the song where you want to um, start from, where you want to scratch from. You might mark it um, back in the day. So, remember, uh, we haven't introduced the digital part yet. So, they would actually mark on their turn on their vinyl with a crayon uh, or a sticker stickers really popular kind of mark an area sometimes you can use what's on the vinyl as as a mark a, a cue so let's say this is our cue right I might use that as my cue and I'm gonna listen in my headphones for uh, what part starts there so um, Again, that's something I can I can demonstrate uh, in the in the future. So everything here is basically the volume control. So here I have the volume for my headphones. Um, aux out. That's another volume. So this is basically where your speaker connects. So all the music is happening, right? But it's coming out of this speaker. Um, so I plug my speaker in to the mixer here. And um, it just happens to be called auxiliary out. And so this is the volume 
this is the this is what I would use to control the volume for the speaker. The booth sometimes um speak, speak uh, DJs excuse me have a monitor close by. So if I was at a a party and it's a huge space and they have speakers all over, um, I have to be able to hear the music so that I can mix well. So usually we'll have a smaller speaker close by called a monitor. Uh, or sometimes you're in an actual DJ booth, you know, depending on the venue. And so this would be the volume to control that. And then this is the main volume, which is everything. Um, you also have um, a mic. So I can connect my headphones, but I can also connect a microphone here. And so, you know, this is for my mic levels all of these and um, these are for cues which we'll get more into when we talk about uh, the digital component of DJing but this is the basics of a mixer you have your mids highs and your lows you have your faders right and then you have your cue things that you need to for your cue points and um, this is what folks were using in the set not this exact equipment obviously um, definitely not this mixer but techniques were very popular and important they were older version but these turntables are um, highly respected amongst DJs and um, so yeah nowadays uh, you know it's 2020 and so with these turntables back in the day you'd be carrying around lots of crates and uh, crates of, of vinyl of, of records to play now you can put all your music on your laptop so uh, usually I have a hard drive to connect where I keep all my music and then I have um, computer said I use a program called Serato so the next time we meet, we will dive in deeper into counting, dropping on the one. We'll actually turn the equipment on and use it. And um, I'll, I'll do a demonstration for y'all and, and do a recap of, of like the fader and the different pieces of the turntable and the mixer. Um, yeah, and I'm also going to be talking more about some DJ history, hip hop history, and uh, how to become a DJ. Like some information you should have if you're interested in becoming a DJ. I just wanted to start off with like an introduction of myself and how I got here. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, please hit me up at DJ Troy Frost on Instagram and Twitter. You can email me, DJ Troy Frost at gmail.com. You can hit me up through TCP. Shout out to TCP. Um, but word. I'll see you next time.